what were some of the things that made you all very motivated and focused on saying, we're doing a success here, even if we have to pivot and we didn't find success initially, you kept going instead of giving up. What do you think was what caused you to have that resilience? I, I think it's funny that people, um, if people think that I, I try to think it didn't work, I don't know if they understand the true game. This whole startup thing is just a game to me, at least. Of course, there's, there's people out there with very like, you know, they have, they have big, big missions and they want to achieve, they want to save the world. But at the, at this level, the grandest scale, it's a really interesting opportunity to like, there's something in the world that's missing and there are players in it that are trying to capture it. And you're trying to like, it's, it's changing. It's like signal based sailing that, that truth of what's missing the world is dynamic. Every second it changes. And you're just, you're trying to figure out what, what, like I said, the true shape of the blob is. And if you can see that better than anybody else, then you can build a big business. Building a big business is just one way to manifest this all of finding the truth and like actioning on it. And uh, that's, that's what I see it as. And so it's like, you know, there's me, there's my co-founders. We, ha we have one company, but there are other players too. There's like, you know, copy.ai, there's qualified, there's, if, if each, each of these companies has that person that's thinking in this way. So at the grandest scale of this metagame of chess, who can see it more clearly? And these days, like who can build a big enough following that other people can see the movement and tie themselves to and align themselves to your side versus their side. It's, it's this metagame of chess. And I think that's fascinating. And on yeah, well, why stop that? It's so interesting. That's, that is very, I'm, I'm very fascinated by the mindset that you have and the culture you have around this whole startup vibe because for some people this sounds like terrifying high anxiety high stress and here you are you're calling it a game which might be mind-blowing for most people that could be listening to right now but it sounds like what you're playing as the actual company that's like your your vision is anchored to something bigger where you're not as attached to the actual product you're not attached to the actual thing that had to pivot you seem to be attached to something bigger which is the fact that oh yeah i'm i'm playing a game of chess i don't care if my pawn died because i've gotten to level up into a rook or something and it seems to be the perspective you have which i find is just a fascinating mindset yeah did you always have this mindset? Like, where do you think you built that? It doesn't seem, it seems like very culturally inherited from your environment, family, uh, America. What do you think? No, I think, um, I, I've always been a tweaker, I guess. Like this, it shows my career, like just try something, try something else, keep going around. And I guess I've tried a lot of different things and I eventually had to learn to get good at them eventually. And so this is just the next thing to get good at, to be a founder that no one talks about this job um, they talk about their sales that does the sales thing. There's customer success, there's engineering. They do all these functional things, but no one talks about this, this meta game that you have to play as a founder. And so it just ends up being the next thing that I have to win and, and, and be, and be good at. The fact that you even started to play in this field, which is now very data driven and AI is in this field, it seems like it's moving really, really fast. Um, is that in your advantage or is that adding to the pressure of the game? Yeah, it's, it's, it totally is. Right now it's a race. And I said this a year ago to the team, I was like, there's gonna be a future where um, there's gonna be an AI SDR. And because the difference between speed to lead of a minute to seconds is, is like 10X, 100X even. But, but the difference between a second to, to nothing is like, you know, infinite. You, you could scale, inf you can personalize infinitely. So the ROI in that is insane. The first company to get there, that's like Tesla full, uh, full self-driving. You've won the market, you know what I mean? Like the, no one will be able to touch you at that point. You have so many cars out there on the road that's collecting petabytes of data every single day about images and what the driver does. Like you, you just, you can't win. So like once you get that data moat and you create the system of full self-driving, in this case, it's full self SDRing effectively then uh, it's it's going to be game changing. So it's a race right now. It's very scary. And most people don't talk about it, but that's the game we're playing. I find for me, I'm not even going to talk about who's listening to this podcast. For me, this is an entire game I don't even see as playing. I haven't even witnessed this game playing. You're in the middle of it. You understand. And this is kind of what you're saying or this truth that you've seen because you've been poking at this blog where most people are completely oblivious that this is happening. And I'd be very curious to paint that vision of the, pic the picture you know is coming into this fruition, like this zero you know, a full automated SDR. Like, how does that change the everyday life of most people in the workplace? You're gonna get a whole bunch more spam. It's gonna be a whole, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're gonna get it, we're gonna get it wrong in the beginning. It's gonna go sideways. 
Uh, it's it's not going to look great and to start off with, but it's it's kind of like this foggy river. You're crossing the foggy river. Like we're 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 getting there in the right direction of full STR. That's good for the buyer, but in the beginning, it's going to suck for a bit, and then we'll get better. And you know what's going to happen next? There's going to be tools out there that fight against the AI. That's going to be like it's going to be AI that combats the AI that says that automatically unsubscribes you, automatically puts mm. you on do not call lists. And why would a company not buy that? Like, my gosh, my people are spending 30% of the time in emails and 80% of that is deleting spam. I'm going to buy that tool. So it'll be a battle, but it, over time, it's going to improve the buyer experience, I believe. You know, for most people who aren't in this industry, the best way I could tangify this is like people writing essays in university using ChatGPT, and now professors have to get an AI tool to check if it was written by ChatGPT or not. But this is happening in the sales and marketing world right now. And I think we've already noticed there's a lot of like, I'm seeing my inbox people pitching to be on the podcast, like their AI tools that are doing it automatically. Um, and you're just seeing a high volume of that. So this is like the messiness before it becomes beautiful and seamless where the own, like the future I'm assuming after this chaos, messiness and annoyance that I think is coming our way, we're already seeing it. But the ultimate way, which I think kind of brings it back to this whole concept of selling with love is you're going to get maybe one email in your inbox, but it'll be the exact email you need for the problem you're trying to solve now. That's exactly right. Thank you so much for listening to the Selling with Love podcast. We have some previous episodes you can tune into right here. And if you prefer the short form content where you get to the point in under 10 minutes, we do have a ton of clips from our best episodes that are being shared on this channel as well. So pick which one supports you the most. And of course, thank you for liking, subscribing, and of course, selling with love.